You know, ever since Mongrel stepped into the scene, I mean, he's been considered one of the world's best Fortnite players. Fast forward two years, and he's still out there winning big. So what is it that sets Mongrel apart from the average Joe? And what can we learn by looking at his play style? Bunch of Crunch Army, where you at? Your motivation guy is back, and today I'm gonna be diving into the play style of none other than FaZe Mongrel, and looking at what he does right and what he does wrong. When discussing Mongrel's strengths, it'd be a disservice not to bring up his aim. You're both dog shit compared to me, bro. Seriously, guys, like whether at close range with shotguns or long range with ARs, it's crazy how many shots Mongo can actually land. You know, it's no wonder why, you know, he's considered one of the best shooters in Fortnite, especially when using rifles, right? Like, his crosshair just locks into players and just perfectly tracks. Even with some of the more difficult shots, like the mid-air targets, Mongo with the rifle in his hands, yo, it can ruin their day. But what's the deal, bro? Like, was Mongo just born with, like, godly hand-eye coordination or something like that? Maybe. You know, he definitely wouldn't have such incredible aim without the time he puts into his aim trainers. But, you know, I'm talking both in-game ones, like Skavak which you know you could just play with this creative code and you know and once outside of fortnite like kovacs with those mongo focuses on improving two types of aim right short range flicks and tracking which is really smart because sometimes the flick shots you might take are long but more often you mean you're just doing a tiny adjustment after building or editing so short flicks are vital to really get good at especially when you practice proper crosshair placement like mongo does and of course ar aim is all about tracking guys right Rifles are so crucial with Fortnite, and you know, they're a massive part of Mongo's playstyle, which we're gonna show you a little later. So, you know, he focuses on having the best rifle aim he possibly can. All right, you know, Mongo's got so good at his aim, like through practice, but sometimes that's not necessarily how we all learn. Like, if you're still struggling to learn some of the finer mechanics like this, you guys, I tell you all the time, you know, we tell you every single day, you gotta check out ProGuys.com and you have to talk to one of our 24 7 coaches. I mean, if you haven't tried it, what are you waiting for? I mean, you can check it out just try it out to see if it works for you you know sometimes we don't really learn as well on our own and and having a good coach can really help your game bro like it'll take your game to the next level anyways all right back to mongrel the fact that he puts in so much work you know to improve his aim has been a massive reason for his success it's the same reason his builds and edits are just so quick and so smooth edit courses and creative free building have historically been a massive part of his warm-up routine although talking about aim again you know we should also point out his sensitivity more specifically specifically his targeting sense he keeps that low at 30 percent and low is good low is precise right most players would be better off decreasing their targeting sense to something lower than 50 percent it just really helps with rifle aim but that brings us to our next point mongo isn't afraid to change his settings throughout his whole career he's done that guys stretch res colorblind mode optimal binds you know whatever he can just get an advantage with and now our favorite thing he's changed he bound his weapon pickup to scroll wheel so when he spins it he just vacuums up everything way 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 faster than spamming a key kind of a cheesy strat but you know it works man it's it wins mongrel lots of 50 50s and it's all because of his willingness to experiment with new things all right moving on another area where mongrel shines is situational awareness like you know how chess grandmasters can think 10 or 20 moves ahead uh that's what he does <laughs> that's what it feels like when you play against mongrel not only is he a top notch at predicting enemies and fights but it's general decision making also deserves credit so in our analysis all right check this out like we really enjoyed seeing how mongrel didn't mindlessly stampede into every fight he actually exhibited really restrained behavior because you don't always have an advantage entering fights and without one they realistically aren't worth taking at least when you're really trying to win and when things weren't going his way mongrel would sometimes even disengage entirely to play out the rest of his match and get those placement points something way more players actually need to do rather than just committing to already lost fights anyways like you know not all of us are as fast thinking as mongrel i get it but it's always good to think about the impact your decision is going to have you know minutes down the line before you make that play speaking of which all right we need to talk about mongrel's end game so you guys ready for this come on now bunch of crunch army hope you guys are still here let's go this is the part of the match mongrel absolutely kills it okay <laughs> and let's take a look why 
One thing we notice is that Mongrel prioritizes controlling high ground, especially in Teemo's where it's more viable. To do this, all right, he inches his way up the mid ground layers until he reaches a point where he can find an opening, usually in the form of a beam on height. Then once he's applied pressure, I mean, he typically uses mobility to close the gap. And from height, he's always, I repeat guys, he's always shooting, obviously for kills, but also to waste enemy mats and, you know, just keep enemies down low. So one of Mongol's biggest strengths is his rifle aim. So the many angles high ground provides is a significant deal for him. But sometimes high ground is off the table. Like in those cases, Mongo still manages to do exceptionally well. Some strats that you know he uses include utilizing enemy builds for cover, staying ahead of the storm, positioning near the edge of the storm, and forcing impact kills when he needs a refresh. So if you can remember back to the World Cup era, <laughs> Mongo clutched several of his qualifications through his in-game performance, and this goes back to his situational awareness. Mongo is so so good at moving really quickly in the end game because you know he doesn't have to think as hard about each move all the experiences he's like got and you know the vod reviewing he's done has been instrumental in growing his skills to the point where he's just thinking instinctively and you know if you're trying to grow to that point just know that it takes tons of self-reflection on your mistakes you know if you don't look back at losses and you know learning experience like mongo does you're gonna fail to improve as a player and i want you to know I, not everybody is mongrel or gonna play like mongrel i get it but you can take these tips and apply it to your own life and apply it to your own in-game skills and strats and everything that you're doing to help you improve at the game right and you got to believe in yourself like i really think it starts there like if you think that you're never ever going to get to that next level then why bother like if you don't believe in yourself nothing else is going to follow after that and so i encourage you as your motivation guy right now you have to believe in yourself you know scratch everything that you've been through and every single day is a new start all right so today is a new start and i want you to think like that tomorrow's a new start and every single day you're getting better you're getting better work on those weaknesses and get better all right so we got to get here what does mongrel do wrong here we go well this is probably isn't a revelation but mongrel kind of has anger issues <laughs> anybody have anger issues out there anybody is it just me is it just me come on let's be real Game, I swear this game is so sh I've never heard you raise your hand. If I'm in World Cup qualifiers this happening, I promise, wallahi, I'm breaking everything in my house and moving to f my f Somalia. Like, you know, he plays up his rage for the stream, right? It's hilarious. Rest in peace of the keyboards. He's definitely smashed. <laughs> but at times, it's kind of real though, right? Like, and when he's in a three hour grueling tournament with multiple games, feeling constant frustration toward the game, I mean, that can have a severe effect on your performance. It might have to do with the fact that Mongo sets such high expectations for himself. Like when you have expectations for yourself, it's the easiest to get frustrated, especially really super high expectations, right? When those expectations are not meet, that disappointment hits you. It like burns inside of you. You just want to let it out and scream and go crazy right so you know the whole entire world was calling him one of the best among millions so when something goes wrong with mongrel it probably really really gets to him and you know moving past tilt isn't easy right there's really no instant fix to this but i mean there are some psychological tricks such as taking deep breaths or placing yourself in a positive casual environment that really does help guys trust me if anybody knows about how to overcome tilt it's your boy it's your motivation guy that's for sure so if you haven't noticed mongo's at his best when he's playing duels or trios and we think that might be because he's hanging out with his friends you know which calms him down obviously and he's placing himself in a positive environment that lowers his stress levels and that results in him thinking much more clearly but that's all really really meta stuff like as for actual in-game like mistakes sure mongrel occasionally messes up edits or takes missteps that puts him in lousy positions but we wanted to look at consistent mistakes so all right we loaded up mongrel's dream hack replays where he played with mitro and one thing that really stuck out was his material management during the early game okay so out of the games we analyzed at least three of mongrel's deaths could have been prevented if he just farmed more mats these weren't impossible to win scenarios either just some 2v2s and typical situations oftentimes where mongo starts off with an opening but ends up losing once builds start flying out and for why such a great player is skipping out on you know such an essential step we notice a couple of reasons for one farming takes time which typically means less looting and more challenging time you know gaining a positional advantage in your drop spot but secondly farming gives your position away sometimes and it seems mongo doesn't want that to happen his early game play style is really based on sneaking up on opponents usually through natural high ground 
and hitting huge openings so that he can just swiftly finish them off, right? But if at any point you give your position away, you probably won't be landing any surprise attacks in your enemies. So, Mongo does ignore farming for a good reason, but still, like, we think he could definitely strike a much better balance. If he just hit more objects or set a material number for himself before engaging, like, at least 250 mats. Other than those two issues though, like Mongo really doesn't have any more consistent patterns of misplays. Guess that's no real surprise considering he's one of the best in the entire world. You know, ultimately, Mongo excels in many areas. I mean, he's become one of the best aimers due to the time he puts into training, and he's still pretty good at analyzing his surroundings before making decisions. But Mongo's downfalls include a tendency to tilt, as well as a lack of material farming for early game fights. But hey, if you guys noticed something about Mongo's gameplay that we didn't, let us know down in the comments section below. If you guys liked the video, you already know what to do. Subscribe to the channel and make sure to connect with me on my Instagram at yourmotivationguy. Keep grinding. I'm so proud of you guys. I'll see you soon.